Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, play fast football. All right, today I'm going to do a little video on uh, just looking at philosophically what is next on defense. All right, talking about, I'm going to look at some numbers uh, on a few things, talking about some games and some things that happened this past weekend, and then uh, the, the college playoff uh, coming up, and then some numbers from previous years. And now I'm going to talk to you about what I think uh, we're going to start seeing or what we need to start seeing. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Dome Hats, headwear sponsor for play fast football, and, and uh, the company that I use for the high school that I'm at. Custom and quality uh, hats, beanies, visors. You can go to their online hat builder and customize and build your own hat. Every hat has a story. Make sure you let Dome help you tell yours. Game Strat sideline replay system we use. If you're looking for a highly reliable, highly affordable sideline replay system, check out Game Strat. Baker Sporting Goods, which is the uh, sporting goods company that we use for our power, uh, apparel, coaches' gear. Get our uniforms from them, our players' gear, under uniform gear, spirit packs. Uh, anytime we do uh, online stores for fans, everything we do is through Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play Football, it's a powerful presentation. It's uh, the best play design or play diagram tool, uh, in my opinion, on the market. It's easy to use. I use it for webinars and, and any uh, anything, any stuff that I do for my other Patreon website or anything that we do playbook-wise, I'm always going to use Just Play Football, so make sure you check them out. Difference USA, all right, we have one uh, in our in our weight room. It's the ultimate striking machine. Work on striking all year long, all year long on uh, on a pad with elbows in, thumbs up, different adjustable springs. So as your kids get stronger, it makes it harder to uh, to leverage the pad in. So your kids are learning how to use their hips and hands and how to strike, where their elbows, eyes, thumbs need to be. All good things in striking. Make sure you check out all right, Difference USA, and then high and tight which is a ball security training aid that we use. You have to hold the ball in the exact proper position with all the points of pressure, wrist above elbow, all right, split the tip, ball locked in where it needs, tight against the chest. If you don't hear the beat, you're holding the ball wrong. So as soon as you hear that beat, you get that muscle memory. Yes, that's the spot right there. That's where it needs to be. Anything else that you're doing where you don't hear the beat, you know that the ball doesn't need to be in that position. All right, so ball security is job security. Why not have a training aid that gives you instant auditory feedback? Check out high and tight. All right, so here's what we're going to look at today. Obviously, uh, the game's just this past weekend. Uh, I am an Alabama fan. Most people that follow me know that. I've been an Alabama fan since about 1978 when I started playing Pop Warner football growing up in New York. Uh, on Long Island, we had no other major college football programs, so Alabama and Notre Dame back in 78, 79 were a big thing. So right around the time of the 79 Sugar Bowl, Barry Krause, the goal line stand, I was a... Uh, as a Pop Warner kid, Major Ogilvy was my hero growing up. I wanted to be a running back in the worst way. I wanted to wear number 42. I wanted to be Major Ogilvy. I wanted that, all right, split bar face mask. So, um, you know, I've been an Alabama fan for a long time, and it's the evolution of football from then till now is so different. It's, it's completely crazy, all right. And, um, you know, what we watched the other night and, and what we've watched this entire football season and probably the last two seasons – you're now, again, seeing the evolution of football start to change a little bit. The old adage always used to be defense wins championships, all right, and offense wins games, or offense sells tickets, defense wins championships. And for a long time, there were a lot of teams that were built that way as an Alabama fan. We were built that way for a long, long time. But as I go through some numbers right now, we are going to have to start looking at, as coaches, is that really true anymore? All right, is that really holding true? All right, so what I've got up here is the numbers of the four college football playoff teams. Okay, and what I have over here on the left is their offensive ranking. All right, so you've got a team that's ranked 11th, 22nd, 5th, and 6th. So you've got three teams in the top 15, nobody outside the top 25. All right, over here, all right, I've got their defensive rankings. All right, so 6th, 21st, 33rd, 34th. All right, so only two in the top 25, only one in the top 10, and two outside the top 30 on defense. Okay, what I have here is also, all right, their defensive numbers. So 299 yards per game given up, 17 points per game given up. Okay, 335 yards per game given up, 18 points per game given up. 351 yards per game, 19 points per game given up. 358 yards per game, 17 points per game given up. Okay, now, if you had to guess, all right, if you had to guess, don't know which way you would guess, but it just so happens to be that is Clemson, that is Notre Dame, that is Alabama, that is Ohio State. Okay, last year, LSU in 2019, 
gave up 345 yards per game, 22 points a game. And they were, depending on which site you look at, they were somewhere around 30th in total defense. Okay, as good as Dave Aranda is, those were their numbers last year. All right, now, here's one thing that you've got to look at, including Alabama now. All right, how teams are playing offense certainly has a big effect on defense. Not only the offenses they're, you're playing against, but the way your offense is playing football, all right, is, is making things really, really tough on your defense, all right? Perfect case example of that. If you follow, all right, Alabama-Florida, great game this weekend, a game that a lot of Florida fans probably thought they'd never see. They didn't think they had a chance. A lot of them, the diehards did, but most of them that are fair weather or just, you know, complainers on Twitter, they thought they'd get beat by 30 points. They lose a game 52-46. All they want to talk about is how bad their defense is, how bad their defense, how bad their defense is. Yes, but Alabama gave up 46. You happen to give up 52. Here's something you need to look at. Virtually no running game, which is why, you know, Kyle Trash should probably win the Heisman Trophy. The numbers that he has without a running game, all right, and the things that he's had to do to carry that offense, even though he's got... Uh, probably top 10 pick in, in Pitts. He's got a first or second round pick in Tony, possibly a top three round pick in Grimes. It's not that the cupboard's bare, but they have no running game. So Kyle Trask has done an amazing job of, of orchestrating that offense and, and just doing some unbelievable things and driving Alabama absolutely nuts. Here's the problem. As much as you want to complain about the defense, the way you're playing offense is killing your defense. You are scoring, at, you're scoring a lot of explosive plays. You're going down the field in two minutes. All right, you're putting your team back on the field as quickly as you can. When you're not scoring, you're not taking any time off the clock because you're throwing the ball so much. So incompletion, stop the clock. All right, you're putting your defense back on the field quickly when you do score. You're not taking any time off, off the clock or on most drives when you don't score. How you play has a tremendous effect on that. So going back to um, Probably, you know, you could probably go back to the Rich Rodriguez days and, and, and maybe even earlier than that and, and the Urban Meyer days. Um, but really looking at the Chip Kelly days at Oregon and, and then Art Browse at Baylor and studying things, what you ended up finding out was these teams were so good on offense that it really affected how their defense played because the other teams were getting way more possessions per game because these offenses were scoring every five to seven plays. They were scoring in a minute and 12 seconds. Your defense is on the field more. It's getting less rest, all right? And then, because of the style of play, sometimes turnovers, field position, there's a lot of things that go into playing defense, all right? So what we want to look at right now is what is going to be next, all right, for defenses. Here was Alabama in 2017. 261 yards a game, 13 points a game, second in, in overall defense or total defense, however you want to rank that, okay? Here they are now. Almost 100 more yards a game given up, 351 yards. Almost a, 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 definitely a touchdown, okay, not seven points, but a touchdown, six points more a game, all right, and, and dropped 31 or, or 30 rankings in total defense, all right. And this, this year, other than one or two games, was about as dominant as they've been with points scored, margin of victory, all the things they've done on offense are absolutely ridiculous. But guess what? It affects how you play defense. All right, and Coach Saban knows what he's doing. He's not dumb. He was one of the first guys to complain about offense in the last couple of years and the rules and how you know unrealistic it is for defenses and what they need to do. But he was also one of the first guys to go out and do everything and find everybody that beats his system. All right, there's a reason the guy has done the things he's done. All right, he's not he's not the type of guy that's going to say this is what we do. I don't care what else. No, he adapts. He improvises. He adjusts. We're going through a paradigm shift in football right now. All right, we are, we are literally going through a shift, and Alabama is, is no better team to look at 2017 to right now. Look at those numbers, all right, how much different they are on defense, because they now realize that you've got to be extremely explosive on offense if you want to keep up with these other teams in the country. So that is going to affect your defense, all right, because of the style of play that we're now seeing from a lot of teams. That's why, in my opinion, you're seeing a little bit worse defense from the numbers, all right? But when you really look at it, when, 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 you, when you start to think about why, what are the real issues, okay? Biggest issue, probably number one, and everybody talks about all the time, RPOs. 
using the rules to your advantage, allowing linemen to get two to three yards downfield and usually probably more with low pads and a demeanor blocking a run that put people in binds. All right? Space that offenses are creating, tempos that offenses are, are playing at, the rules of the game that are making tackling, all right, not only from a rules, not only from a, from a targeting, um, you know, players ejected standpoint, but from a safety concussion protocol, all right, now everything we're doing in the game to keep people safe that we should be doing is probably leading to sometimes, you could argue, worse tackling. All right, I know that, 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 that all the systems of tackling that are out there and all the different systems of, of how to tackle correctly and how to tackle safely, there's nothing wrong. Those are great systems. There's some really smart guys in the rugby systems and USA football and a lot of different tackling systems that are great fundamental and technical teachers of the game. But what's happening now is offenses are putting us in greater spaces, they're making us cover more space, and then the matchups and talent are getting a little bit different, where the offensive guys are just as talented as the defensive guys, and now we are starting to, by, by trying to keep the head behind, all right, and near foot, near shoulder, I see, at least in my opinion, you know, when you're not doing it correctly, I see more arm tackles, I see, you know, worse positions to get into the tackle, and then by, you know, getting these kids almost afraid to play the game the way they used to play it because of targeting rules and defenseless player and leading with the crown of the helmet and all those things. Now you put the defense at, at, at such a disadvantage, not only schematically, not only with the rules of, of, of what you can do with RPOs, not only the fact that RPO is option football on steroids, whether flex bone or option football people, you know, whether they want to look at it that or not, it's option football on steroids. And when you go back throughout the course of the game, the wishbone and triple option football was one of the first, all right, um, you know, evolutions of the game that drove defenses nuts for a while. Okay, so the offense is always going to dictate the changes in the game to the defense. And the defense is always going to respond. Why? Because the offense calls the formations, the offense calls the plays. We, the defense has to dictate to what the offense is doing. So it's not like the defense is a step behind. The only reason they're a step behind is because it's going to take time to find out what the offense is starting to do to figure out how to defend them. Okay, so. You know, when you look at all these things with space and tackling and, and trying to keep everybody safe, less contact during the week so we can't tackle as much. We can't simulate the drills. We can't simulate the speed. How do teams that don't have the players that Alabama and Clemson has simulate that in practice to get ready to tackle Alabama and Clemson's players? If you're Florida and you don't have a great running game, even though I think they have some good running backs, how do you get ready in practice to, to tackle Najee Harris and and Brian Robinson against one of the best off offensive lines, if not the best offensive line in the country. You can't simulate that. So all these things make it tough to play defense. So where are we going? I think what you see Iowa State doing. I think some of the stuff you saw LSU doing All right, in, with, with Dave Aranda now. Tight front. What is that going to do? It's going to get the ball. All these offenses want to put the ball in space, right? they got great receivers and great quarterbacks, so you can't give them space. you got to put overhangs out there. you got to cover down. When you cover down, it leaves more running rooms. The tight front, the odd front stuff, the different shaded fronts playing four eyes allows you to play with overhangs, take away some of the interior gaps so the ball gets sent out where you want to. Playing three high safeties, all right, trying to confuse that quarterback, but more or less trying to keep the ball inside and in front, trying to let the guy run inside out to be the alley fitter and get all the runs to go out where you want them. All right, Florida did it to Alabama the other night four different times. Empty sets, made the check. If the box is light, we're going quarterback draw, okay? That's the game. So what do you got to do on defense? You've got to give them a light box. You've got to take away some of those throws out there. But then you also have to defend those runs. So what do you do? You come with these different fronts. All right? You play with more speed on the field. You play positionless defense, quote, unquote, as they call it, like Jay Bateman and, and some of the, the, the guys in the last couple of years are doing hybrid players, positionless defense, guys that can blitz, guys that can cover, guys that can be on a hash but also be an outside linebacker, doing things that make it difficult on the offense. That's going to be the evolution of football. The offensive numbers are off the chart so far right now. The, the next adaptation of football as a coach is going to be what the hell do we do on defense to slow these teams down. It's going to be interesting. If you love studying football, I think it's going to be great to look at. All right, If you like looking at things like I do and putting your own take on like some of these numbers, not an exact science. That's just my opinion. It's my opinion as an Alabama fan. It's my opinion as a high school football coach and a guy that's been in this business for a long time. The next adaptation is coming on defense. I think it's going to come in the form of some of the things that Iowa State's doing. I think it's going to come in the form of some of these sim and creep pressures, all right? But the bottom line is, is that going to equate to high school football? How are we going to stop some of the things that we're seeing, all right? And just like the defense in colleges are, it may not be the same adaptation, but everybody has to adapt 
when the offense adapts a little bit so that we can figure out how to win games. I hope this video helps you guys. I hope you're all staying safe out there. Click that subscribe button. Turn those notifications on. Make sure you thumbs up, thumbs down the video when you like or don't like the comment. Leave a, uh, the content. Leave a comment. I try to get back to every comment that I can respond to. All right. Stay safe. Have a great holiday season. There will be some more videos out before Christmas. Thank you for everything you guys do for me. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you next time.